Mortlock, the Beast of Dufton. There's no other distillery like it in Speyside. But is it a friendly beast? Let's talk about Mortlock 16. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be talking about Mortlock, 16-year-old, single malt, Speyside Scotch Whiskey. Now, that is just a beautiful bottle. Let me just start with that. And it isn't about what the bottle looks like, but man, when I am done with this bottle, I'm going to make this into the decanter. Now, Mortlock 16. Um, Mortlock as a distillery in general. It's a distillery in Speyside in Scotland. It was established in 1823, and they're really known for um, kind of a meaty, savory, slightly sulfuric uh, distillate. And really interesting for them is their actual distillation process. I'm not going to get too much into it here, but they have six differently shaped stills, or each still is just slightly different. And they don't do a double distillation or a triple uh, distillation. There's somewheres in between. So some of it gets a triple distillation uh, and some of it just gets a double. It's 2.81 uh, times distilled. Figure that one out. I am not a mathematician. I, I liked history and English. I was not a fan of math in, in high school. So 2.81 times distillation. This distillery is one of those classic malt distilleries that happens to be owned by Diageo. Uh, now, this bottle in, uh, in particular, it is bottled at 43.4%. Uh, it is chill filtered, has E150 caramel colorant added to it. You can kind of tell by just like the hue, even looking at it. But if you dig a bit further online, you'll find it's mit Farbstoff. It, it has colorant added to it. However, for cask makeup, they use uh, both first fill and refill X sherry casks. And I, I'm gonna guess Oloroso casks just from my tasting notes and, and my experience with this. I can't prove that, but that that's my best guess there. Uh, there is a 12 and a 20 year old, I believe in the relaunched range uh, as of 2018. They had relaunched Mortlock, uh, Diageo being they, uh, in 2014, as almost like a luxury brand, they kind of reduced the bottle size down to 500 milliliter bottles and they jacked up the prices. And that was extremely unpopular. And so this is part of the relaunched, revamped range. And for me, this is kind of the, 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 the whiskey in that range that really stands out. Enough background. If you guys want to know more about Mortlock in the future, I can talk about it in a more thorough video, but let's just get to the review. It's on the nose. Very traditional sherry nose on this. Um, it's very pleasant, sherry profile. I'm getting, uh, you know, plum and prune. A bit of spice. I'm getting like uh, an amaretto sort of note. Like there's like a sweet almond thing going on here. A bit of like uh, baked apple pie sort of thing because just the, the spice with a bit of um, almost like white white flesh fruit kind of profiles as an apple pie. But more so plum and prune, very prevalent. Um, when I had Kyla smell this, she pointed out to me, uh, Tawny, like uh, we have a bottle of port that we were drinking over the Christmas season. Tawny port, I can see that completely. Mm. some orange and there's also like a black tea note and so when i've been nosing this recently getting ready for this review i usually pick up like a uh, very um a vibrant like orange pico note yeah every time it's like orange pico for me which just brings me back to when i was younger because my, my dad drank orange pico tea he really enjoyed it and i picked up an enjoyment of it yeah um, some caramel, some toffee, 
bit of leathery or tobacco notes too. Um, not overwhelming. Um, not super sulfuric for me. I know Mortlock can be really sulfuric. It can be uh, super savory. I don't necessarily, uh, I'm not overwhelmed with those sorts of notes with this bottling. I usually get those more in independent bottles um, rather than this bottle. Okay, let's jump into the palette. Really approachable palette. Um, it's like brown sugar dusted on prunes and raisins, like dates, some raspberry too. But it's just like almost like those caramelized sugars mixed with some fresh fruit. It's got a bit of both worlds there. The tannins pull through, uh, which adds to my um, feeling of, of like a sort of a tea note. Um, again, orange. And this tea note, orange pico, for sure, that's pulling through from the nose. Very cohesive, I will say, about this whiskey. Um, the nose to the palate and to the finish, it is a straight line. It doesn't necessarily, and that's not to say it's just flat. That's to say that what you're getting on the nose, you get delivered in the palate, and it goes through to the finish. It's not bait and switch. It's not, it's not giving you one thing and then giving you something entirely different, which is nice. It's very, again, cohesive. Um, kind of like an orange marmalade thing, again. Mm. There's a nuttiness, uh, again, pointing towards that, that almond, that sweet almond. To me, again, I usually think uh, I compare that to like amaretto. It's definitely a nuttiness. That, again, to me, points towards like Oloroso casks. I usually get like nuttiness. There's a little bit of a coffee thing here too, which points me in that direction. Maybe a touch of milk chocolate as well. It is a palette that I feel like anyone can really uh, get really clear tasting notes from. It's not something you really have to search. You don't have to go digging um, really like far into this bottle to start pulling these sorts of things out. Um, that said, it's an unsurprising palette. It is not a bottle that is going to hold your attention all night uh, with its complexity. It is what it is, and it gives you what it is, and that's it. So it's not going to surprise you. It, it's not going to come out of left field with a brand new taste, you know, that makes you go, oh, oh yes, now I get it. Also, because of where it's bottled at 43.4%, it is a bit, um, it's a little thin. It's a little thin on, on the mouthfeel, not on flavor, but on the actual body. Now I do find that water does help this a bit. You gotta be very careful not to overwater it. And um, I have to say, I, I'm used to using a little tincture like this for dropping water in, um, but I received a really wonderful and, and uh, kind gift from Steve, thank you, Steve of this Angel Share water dropper. So I'm gonna start using that uh, in my videos whenever I need to add water. And just water throws up more aromatics. Again, I, I can't get past this this orange pico sort of tea vibe with the prunes and the plums, the very sweet sherry notes, um, and, and again the oak tan and the spice. Like it, it's all there. It just comes out more when you release it with some water. It might shade a bit towards the um, savory side of Mortlock, especially after a bit of that water, but it's more a shadow of what you'd expect if you've drank uh, older Mortlock bottlings, especially any older independent bottlings. Uh, I have a few independent bottlings of Mortlock that I enjoy, and again, it's just way more prominent, and it's a more sulfuric tone too, so maybe they just tried to work that out of this vatting. 
This is a uh, bottle from November of 2018. Uh, if you're wondering, uh, November 19th, 2018. Um, I, I understand that there has been some batch variation since with it, so your bottle might taste a little bit different. On the finish, again, just oak, some light chocolate, malt. It's not a long finish. It ends too soon for me. And again, I think that has to do with the bottling strength. Um, but altogether, it's a very enjoyable whiskey. It's a very classic profile. Um, and it, it's just, what it does, it does really well. And as long as you don't ask too much of it, you're gonna be happy. Now for price on this, uh, in my market, this runs about $150 Canadian. Now I got mine on offer for $90 Canadian uh, out of province. If I ran out of this and I had an opportunity to buy it again at that price, I would. But I am not shelling out $150 for this bottle, personally. Uh, but at the price I paid, which is what I'm going to score it at, um, it's enjoyable. I like it. It's a great bottle to bring up for friends because it looks fancy in this bottle. Again, I'm going to keep this bottle, make it into a decanter. Uh, the score for Mortlock 16 today is going to be 88 out of 100. And that's just because what it does, it does well. It's not a stunner, but it really acquits itself quite well. Um, with that, I'd like to bring more Mortlock uh, to you, uh, more official bottlings, but Diageo, in all its infinite wisdom, decides to bottle things like the 2022 special release, the um, Mortlock Harry Potter Philosopher's Stone edition with a big giant owl on it and wants to charge 500 plus dollars in my market for that, for a non-age statement whiskey, just because it has some tawny port and red Moscato and virgin oak casking to it. Again, Diageo, I think, is jumping the shark a bit here. They're losing the market. They're losing true whiskey fans and enthusiasts. And I think that bottle is going to become a real shelf turd in the next couple of years. I think we're still going to see that 2022 release on shelves years after. Um, so I'd like to bring you more. But I actually think that the Mortlock 16 is kind of the, the perfect uh, bottling in that core range. The 12, I've had a sample. It was okay. The 20 I haven't tried, but it's priced very high. I think the 16 is kind of the, the Goldilocks zone. So if you're gonna give an official bottling for Morlock a try, I highly suggest this 16 year old. Thanks for joining me on the channel once again, guys. You can go ahead and like, share, subscribe. I always love seeing your guys' comments. It's really encouraging to see the uh, feedback. And if you can go ahead and just comment, what are your experiences with Mortlock? Do you prefer the official bottlings or the independent bottlings? And what are your thoughts on these Diageo special releases? Because they really seem to be polarizing these days. With that, um, thank you for joining me and come back for more in the future. Sláinte.